So today, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the hollow where we have very anti-covered and some of the things that I really like. And quite often it's by famous makers. So uh, I'm going to start off with something by Paul Storr of England. So he was born in the 1790s and he did most of his work in the 1820s. And um, it was called his Rococo, Rococo period in the, in the 1820s. And these massive Sheffield candlesticks with these lions on the bottom are my favorite Paul Storm thing that we have at this time. And um, you wouldn't believe how heavy these things are. And they're just as beautiful as they were made in the 1820s. So very cool stuff. Really like his work. Okay, so next thing I'm going to show you are this pair of big vases. So these are by Tiffany. They're from, I would say probably the 1880s, 1890s. You very seldom see a pair. Um, and um, it's also rare, a big pair. You know, so these are pretty darn good sized. I like the motif a lot. So one has these cupids and they're kissing. And they're, if you look, they're way extended beyond the, the body of of the vase. Uh, the other one has cupids playing musical instruments. And again, way extended, really good looking, uh, really like these big vases. So they're special. Okay. Uh, we're sort of going in chronological order as far as er earliest to latest. Uh, this is Martelet. So it's a wine cooler. And um, so dated from circa 1900 or so. And again, I really like the subject matter. Um, I really, in my hollower, I like animals. I like people. Um, I like things that are different. And this does qualify. It's got these mermaids swimming in the waves. And then the handles are seaweed. Um, um, it's really good looking and um, it's, you know, circa 1900, um, maybe a little bit earlier, 1895, something like that. So anyway, Marley was um, Gorham's crowning achievement. So um, in the 1890s, they threw the machinery out of one department and the silversmiths who were basically working with machines those days, they said, you're gonna learn how they used to do it. And they made everything by hand for um, the late 1890s until um, uh, about 1920 was the end, although the last piece was made in 1831, 1931, sorry. And um, so um, I really like Marlowe. I think it's a good investment. This piece is really great. Okay, so then Gorham went to sort of their more modern period. So Eric Magnuson, uh, was a Danish silversmith that Gorham brought over and he worked for them for, for a while um, in the 1920s and early 1930s. A similar piece to this uh, is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, I've not had the pleasure of having one of these before, uh, but it's a covered centerpiece. It's got applied initials right here and uh, for people who like modernism or um, or the 1930s look, uh, this is about as good as it gets. Okay, then we're getting into uh, the late 1920s, late 20th century. Okay, and here is Amelia Castillo. Uh, I love this thing. I, I, th I like things that are, um, as I said, animal related, but I also like things that are um, liquor related. 
And so this is for a pair of wine bottles or it can be used for ice. And so uh, we have these really cute monkeys on the sides. And then we have this tongs for ice with again, monkeys on it. So just a, a cute conversation piece. It's all hand hammered. Uh, it's really special. Okay, so a short time ago, a guy came into our shop and he had this. And I thought this was really cool. So again, Amelia Castillo, um, probably 1970s or so. Um, I mean, can you get any further out than this with these great big birds on, on this little tea set? Um, you know, I mean, I just think it's, um, you know, so cool. If you had a, um, a Western motif house, um, this would be a centerpiece for your cocktail table or, um, you know, dining room table, but um, nice hammering, but everything is overshadowed by these great birds. And um, I think it's really great. Okay, so, so probably um, the best silver in the world today is made in Italy. And um, they've got a tradition that's hundreds, if not a thousand years old of making gray silver. And Milan is probably the center for their, their fine silver. And I love the shell that just came in. So um, it's handmade in Milan, very heavy, very realistic. Uh, be a great thing to have as a centerpiece of a table. You know, again, fill it with fruit. Um, it would be a real eye catcher and a good conversation piece. I love the feet too. Uh, the feet are all smaller shells. So, I mean, the quality of the work here is really great and it's great to know that something um, as well done as this can still be made. And I would say this is probably from, oh, 1970s, 1980s. So. Uh, for someone of my age, it uh, seems like yesterday. Thanks. Okay.